Welcome back to Bucks County Conservation District's video series on the invasive aquatic plant water chestnut. In this video, I will go over the native range of water chestnut, its introduction and spread in North America, and then I'll discuss some key distinguishing characteristics about this plant that can help you identify it out in the field. Water chestnut is often referred to as European water chestnut or Eurasian water chestnut, and that gives some clue as to its native range. Water chestnut originated in portions of Eastern Europe and Western Asia, as well as portions of Africa before it was brought over to North America. In its native range, there is a beetle parasite that impacts its population. Unfortunately, we do not have that species here in North America, and it has not been successfully implemented as a biological control here. I mentioned in the first video that some invasive species are a result of intentional introductions and others were introduced accidentally. Water chestnut was unfortunately believed to be introduced in Massachusetts around 1860 as an ornamental plant for a water garden. It quickly spread to the Charles River and then the Hudson River drainage and Lake Champlain and currently is documented north into Canada and south into Virginia. Rapid growth and unintentional spread via waterfowl, downstream, downstream transport of seeds within a watershed, and human transport of seeds or fragments on boats, trailers, or fishing gear are all potential sources of spread of this invasive species. Water chestnut has several distinctive characteristics and features that I will walk through with the aid of this plant removed from the lake prior to filming. When looking out at the water's surface from a distance, only a portion of the water chestnut plant is visible. We will start by looking at the distinctive rosette and leaf shape and then move down the plant. The floating portion of the plant has a rosette shaped pattern of triangular shaped leaves. These triangular leaves have a toothed edge. For those who know what a strawberry plant looks like, I think the leaves look similar and they are glossy on the top, but have a hairy coating on their underside. These surface leaves are attached to the stem by a petiole, which has an air-filled sac in it, which is what provides the flotation of the rosette. The flower, um, the plant also flowers in June to July. These form small white flowers at the center of the rosette. And then in mid-July through August, the plant will stop flowering and put its energy into developing seed pods and nutlets to drop in late August or September. Each rosette can produce up to 20 seed pods in a season. When they're immature, the seeds are greenish in color and have blunt spines that do not hurt. So don't be too worried about that as you're pulling the plant, but be aware as you pull to the bottom part of the plant where you mis may dislodge mature spent seed pods from the lake bottom. These mature seed pods or nutlets are usually about an inch to an inch and a half wide and have four very sharp barbed spines. The seeds settle onto the lake bottom and can remain viable in the sediment for up to 12 years. The plant also has a long stem that attaches these rosettes to the lake bottom, which is cord-like and can extend up to 16 feet deep. Along the stem, a second feathery submerged leaf shape um, are arranged in a world-like pattern around the stem. The stem is anchored to the bed of the water body by numerous um, densely branched roots. Water chestnut is an annual plant, meaning that it dies back at the end of the growing season and re-sprouts from seed the following year. However, it is also capable of reproducing from fragments, so it's really critical to keep this in mind as you go to remove this plant from the lake. So you can just gently kind of scoop up from the base of the rosette and then slowly pull along the stem to dislodge it as you work. This way, you can hopefully get the majority of the, the, the plant out and not leave fragments behind. I hope you found this video helpful in understanding some of the background from where water chestnut came from, as well as aid you in feeling confident that you're pulling the right plant out of the lake. In our next video, to help you feel even more confident in your identification skills, we'll highlight some of the native plants in Lake Towie that we are hoping that you'll avoid when you come out to pull water chestnut. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.